Colorado Springs Mayor John Southers. Mayor, we thank you so much for your time and, and condolences, first off, to, to your grieving community. can only imagine uh, what you all are grappling with. Uh, before we get to the investigation, I want to talk about the press conference earlier tonight where the police chief read the names of the five victims aloud and urged us all not to forget about them. Talk to us about your community tonight and, and what it's going through. Uh, Lindsay, thank you. Um, our community is doing exactly what I expected it to do. Uh, we were in shock and we were in mourning, but we are immediately uh, exhibiting the resilience that I would have expected from our community. We're providing emotional support, uh, sympathy uh, to the victims, to witnesses that were traumatized. Uh, we're arranging to make significant financial support to any victims that need it. You know, we've uh, had vigils, we've provided uh, uh, call-in lines, we've provided places where people can go uh, for counseling. Uh, as I say, we have a statewide fund that uh, handles situations like this and makes uh, uh, funds available. Uh, the police and prosecutor have made victim witness services available. And most of all, and I think uh, very importantly, I think our communities determined that justice is served in this case. And let's turn now to the two heroes who stopped the shooter just moments after he opened fire. I understand that you had a chance to talk with one of them earlier. Uh, can you tell me about that conversation? Yeah, I called Richard Fierro. Richard uh, is 50 years old. Uh, he was in the bar with his uh, wife and daughter. And um, when the shooter came in, uh, I won't go into uh, any more detail, although I think Richard's given some public interviews about it. Um, he and one other individual, a person by the name of Thomas James, uh, confronted the individual. And Richard actually was able to take a handgun uh, from the waist of the uh, suspect and use that to hit him and immobilize him uh, and uh, disable him uh, so that when the law enforcement actually came into the bar, uh, Richard Fierro uh, had subdued him and was on top of him and law enforcement simply needed to uh, take him into custody. I incredibly heroic actions given the fact uh, that uh, people had already been killed, uh, this was an active shooter, could turn the weapon on anybody in there. Um, and uh, Richard Fierro was an incredibly humble man in the phone conversation I had. He simply reiterated, reiterated to me time and time again, I was there, I was trying to protect my family, and I did what I had to do. Um, and in doing that, uh, I am absolutely confident, and I think most people familiar, familiar with this incident are confident that he saved numerous lives. And certainly putting his own life at risk in doing so. And as we just heard in Matt's report, a man with the same name had a history with the police. In talking about the suspect here, in 2021, police were called because he was allegedly threatening his mother with a homemade bomb and other weapons. That led to a standoff with police in which he was wearing body armor, yelling obscenities, and threatening to set off a bomb. Why didn't that, why wasn't that enough to trigger Colorado's red flag law? Well, first of all, um, let's, let's, let's talk about the fact that, unfortunately, because of a, a change in Colorado law in 2019 that caused for automatically uh, sealing a case regardless of the reason for which it's dismissed, uh, I am unable to talk about the existence or acknowledge the existence of such a case. But assuming such a case existed for a moment, uh, the red flag law still requires, even if the police seize a weapon temporarily, the police uh, still have to, if it's beyond a short period of time, have to show the credible evidence they have uh, to support the fact that the guy is a danger uh, with the weapon. And uh, if, for example, um, the complaining witnesses are wholly uncooperative and there is no such credible evidence, um, I question whether the uh, red flag, flag law could have been implemented. But I am curious because the police in this case themselves were witness to it. They were a party to this man saying that he was going to blow, up, blow them up, right? And, and so I am curious now, based on that, if you're going to be calling on your own lawmakers to review the protocols around the state's red flag law in light of this tragedy where someone could demonstrate um, this potential for violence in front of police and then still get a gun. 
threats have to be made in a context where there is an imminent threat they're going to be carried out. Uh, with the police standing there, uh, he may have been, uh, and I'm talking hypothetically here. Hypothetically. A person could be uh, on a tirade or something, but it actually not constitute a criminal offense. Whereas if he's putting people in imminent fear, uh, that could be a criminal offense, and if those witnesses aren't available, it may not be a prosecutable case, may not sustain uh, a red flag uh, a situation. What I'm encouraging everybody to do is hopefully uh, we will, uh, if in fact it's appropriate, and in fact if there's a case of this nature, uh, we'll see a, a motion filed to open that file, and then we can have a constructive conversation about whether or not there's anything in such a case uh, that should have caused uh, further law enforcement scrutiny. All right, Colorado Springs Mayor John Southers, we thank you so much for your time, and once again, our condolences to your community. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.